This meta's too offensive! Okay, now this is not gonna be a rant post. I've got some legit things that I think uh, you gotta hear, so uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, this is not going to be a rant post. I've got some legitimate concerns about the, uh, the, the meta of the game and where Supercell is kind of taking it. Now, I, I want you to know that I actually really appreciate Supercell's development team. I really think they've done a great job at, uh, at developing and balancing the game according to the player's needs and also according to the, the best way possible. I really think they've done a great job and I agree all individually almost with all of their decisions they've made and it's uh, really been fantastic but there's some things that I've been paying attention to and I've kind of had special privilege to be able to pay attention to it as I've been really deep diving into the usage rates and win rates of all of the cards for the competitive tier lists that I've been doing over the past several months and uh, I think that there's some ways that the developers could really improve in the game that I wanted to wanted to shed some light on and hopefully kind of spread some awareness of that. Uh, first of all, we're going to go ahead and talk about the history of the meta of Clash Royale. We're going to try and break this down quickly so that you can understand what I'm talking about and in its entirety as we move on. So to very first start off, um, the, med the history of the meta. Now when the, when the game very first came out, there was a very obvious issue with the balancing and that was that uh, defensive gameplay was highly celebrated. So we've got the mortar, we've got the expo, and we've got some really defensive um, structures and things like that that were just so annoying to deal with that you got you had draw after draw after draw. In fact, I remember once having 10 draws in a row, which was 40 minutes of wasted ladder gameplay without a single chest to do to prove from it all. So it's super frustrating and annoying. And because of this. Um, Supercell really focused on trying to bring the meta into a little bit more offensive light. They wanted to make the game a little bit more offensive so that people weren't drawing as much and it's a lot less frustrating. In fact, it's a lot less frustrating to draw when you both you and your opponent have taken two towers than when neither of you done any damage onto either tower. Like, that's just an annoying gameplay. So, Supercell made the very first thing, or focused on defensive gameplay. And that has taken us to a meta that has been very balanced between offensive and defense. It's been primarily off offensive, uh, which is fun because you're not gonna run into those draws very often. You can still do those draws, you can still defend and things like that, um, but it's not too offensive. Uh, at least it hasn't been for a long time, which brings me to the topic of today's video. So, when the game first came out, cards primarily focused on defense, so cards that were either only good on defense or just mostly offered the defensive value and didn't offer very much offensive value um, were had a very solid place in the meta. So we're talking about defensive buildings like Tombstone and Inferno Tower. Then we also have some kind of slow moving short range troops like the Ice Wizard, the Valkyrie, cards like that that are very defensive to struggle a little bit on offense. The, and they, they were great. Um, control decks had them, uh, Beatdown decks had them, Siege decks had them, although Siege kind of like died. Um, and uh, because of the nerfs to it, and so that was unfortunate because you still see some Siege gameplay, and you see still, even now, in the CCGS, you'll see some somebody pull out the Expo, and everybody's like, whoa, the Expo, that's crazy, or they'll pull out the Mortar, and you're like, whoa, Mortar deck, what? And then we all try, most, then the average player picks it up, and they're like, this deck sucks, like, I can't make this work at all. Well, that's, the pros are another thing, but most players can't play defensive ex Siege decks. Um, so that's one problem that we're going to talk about later on the death of Siege and how we can bring that back into the game. Um, but then, we also seem to have a little bit of a death of defensive cards, okay? So Supercell, as time moved on, Supercell really kind of focused on creating an offensive game and that's been really fantastic. Uh, they've, because defensive metas are really frustrating and, and boring, they're, they're annoying. Um, so. Let's talk about the, some of the things that have happened over the past. So they added the Inferno Dragon. So this is a little bit more offensive than like the Inferno Tower. It doesn't die with a timer, it requires a response, and it's uh, portable, so you can go on the offense after you've gone on defense. Then they added the Electro Wizard, a really versatile card. Um, super strong on defense, stun and slow ability. I know it's actually just a stun 
but it, it technically slows the troop down for a little bit. Um, and also really strong DPS. He's really great on defense, comes out with the zap, and then goes on the offense. Then they added the Goblin Gang in there. Um, the Goblin Gang came out and they um, basically, I mean, the Goblin Gang was an amazing card. It had, was so strong on defense, then just removed just high, high DPS, just removed threats very quickly, and then went on the offense, and your opponent had to deal with it. Uh, because they didn't, well, an entire Goblin Gang on your tower, like, you're screwed, that's, that's not good. Um, also, the P.E.K.K.A. deploy time decreased from 3 seconds down to 1 second in February of 2017. Now, this, this change didn't actually influence the meta until much later, when the meta had become so offensive that we needed really defensive cards like the P.E.K.K.A., and then to be able to go on the offense after, you know, counter push with the pack afterwards. Uh, but this change was very important, influential. Then we also had the Night Witch that was released in March of 2017, and the Night Witch itself obviously was a, just a nightmare. She was so strong, um, ridiculously overpowered. And even though she's not really a big part in the meta right now, she did play a major role in forcing the meta to become highly offensive. What I mean by that is the use of defensive cards. She totally just annihilated the need for defensive cards, like even like the Inferno Tower. Like she could take down a golem with, and that's she's way less expensive, or she's less expensive than Inferno Tower. And uh, but then could also go on the counter push. Like she was just so strong, and so she forced the meta into being more offensive. Um, and then the Mega Knight was added in August of 2017, and uh, the Mega Knight rivals the P.E.K.K.A. when it comes to its ability to just defend a push and then go on to the offensive push and just offer so much value on both defense and offense. Um, he, he's definitely influencing the meta. He had the highest win rate, or the second highest win rate of all of the cards in my, most, uh, my latest tier list video. And uh, all of this kind of led to the bridge spam meta, which the bridge spam meta Obviously, the bridge ban was before the Mega Knight, but you get what I'm saying. So the bridge ban meta was just a meta where you have the super offensive combo of the band, the Bandit, and the Battle Ram, paired up with cards that are really defensive that also offer offensive value, which is like the Electro Wizard and the Pekka. You take all of those cards and you put them into a deck, and all of a sudden you have offensive push after push after push after push and you're going on defense counter push defense counter push and it's happening so fast that you're it's for it literally forced almost every competitive deck to jump on the bandwagon jump on the bandwagon and become that very offensive type so they could just keep up with that and even though the band the battle round has been nerfed Every competitive deck that we're seeing right now, almost, at least almost every one, has been influenced by that one meta. Um, and now we are in a position where we're in a very offensive meta. And by offensive meta, you the use of the um, the use of defensive cards like the Valkyrie, Musketeer, and the Guards, they're completely replaced by Executioner, Electro Wizard, Goblin Gang, that um, just offer defensive value, and then also offensive value. Defensive buildings, such as Tombstone, Tesla, Cannon, Bomb Tower, and even the Inferno Tower will actually put you at a disadvantage if you put them in your deck, because that just gives your opponent a little bit of time to build up their next push, and then you just have to keep on defending. You just can't keep defending, and if you defend over and over and over again, eventually they're either going to take your tower, or you're going to go into a draw because you're solid defense, but you're never going to take out their tower. Um, but most likely, they'll just wear you down until they take you out. And so defensive cards like this just lead to this really, uh, or the, the lack of, um, the fact that you just can't play these defensive cards has led to this offensive meta that ultimately has led to players needing to have some sort of solid defense that can also go on the counter push, and that is the P.E.K.K.A. and the, bank, the Mega Knight. Those two cards themselves have then led to the death of the beatdown archetype. There's no way you're going to get a giant to the tower if your opponent has the, the P.E.K.K.A. And, I mean, there's a way, but... <laughs> on, in theory, that shouldn't happen. Even the Mega Knight stops a beatdown push. Um, and there, there's... It, because he just, like, obliterates the supporting troops and then goes right back and takes out the, the, the giant. And then he goes back onto the counter push with, a, with much more force than a giant can offer. 
Um, and because of that, now we have not only his Siege, a an invalid or an unviable archetype, we also have Beatdown, which is an invalid archetype. And that wipes out so many uh, options when it comes to the game, if you want to play competitively. There's obviously people who just like want to have fun, but it's not fun to mess around with a deck and then go up against these meta decks that just annihilate you because you, you can't keep up with it. It's just not fun. So now we're in a meta that's overly offensive. And there are a few reasons why, uh, which we've talked about. Let's talk about the issues. First of all, main issue, defense, offense, equilibrium is totally focused on offense. Second issue, archetype equilibrium, where we have only one archetype is in there and the other two archetypes just aren't valid. And we also have power creeping cards which basically are cards that are just better than other cards in basically every way. I talked about that for a little bit. So we got these three different issues um, and the, the power creeping cards. So for example, like the Electro Wizard is better on defense and on offense than the Musketeer in most situations. So that's a power creep example. So we have three these three different options that have led to a lot of cards in the meta just being unviable and a lot of play styles also not being unviable you're basically forced to be uh, make an offensive control deck with specific cards like the pekka or mega knight and the electro wizard and then either minor or the hog rider and there are some different variations like i've said in you know different pros and things like that but if you want to be consistently if you want to for the average player if you want to consistently do well those are your options and uh, and it's been fun and I've actually really enjoyed it. I like playing Hog Lightning with a deck in the deck. I think it's a lot of fun. But I want more options, and I think that Supercell would do really well to try and fix these three issues so that more options can come into the game and people can do some different stuff. And they're, I'm sure that they're working on it. In fact, I'm pretty certain that they're already working on it because, or they're at least aware of it, because of the buff to the Mortar and the Expo. Um, I was not expecting them to do that because what they said in the past is they said, oh, we want, to, we want to focus on offensive gameplay. But when they did that, I was like, they're catching on to this. They, they know what they're doing, but I think that they maybe need to do a little bit more of a shift towards it. So first of all, reestablishing defense, offense, equilibrium. I think the first thing that they really need to do is focus on buffing defensive cards. So the Bomb Tower, the Inferno Tower, the Tombstone, the Tesla Tower, even the Cannon. Um, and then also the sl slow moving um, short range cards like the guards, the Valkyrie and Barbarians. I think these cards need some type of a buff. I'm not going to talk about all the details of all, of all of the cards that I think should be buffed. And I don't think Supercell should do all of them all at once. Because I think that would just be overwhelming and totally throw everything out of whack. But uh, you get what I'm saying. These cards I think they need some type of a buff. Also I think they need to do some type of rework with cards that are extremely defensive and also extremely offensive. Like the P.E.K.K.A. and the Mega Knight. Or at least offer a lot of value in both of them. I wouldn't call it like a super offensive, but you get what I'm saying. Um, so what I mean by that is I think they should be primarily defensive cards that can offer some value on offense, but not very much. I think the easiest way to deal with that is decreasing their hit points so that they're easier to deal with on defense. Um, and or yeah, they're easier to deal with when you're defending against them and and such. But now, I think a lot of these changes might sound really scary to some people because yeah, I remember how annoying the bomb tower was to deal with when it had a ton of HP and that was a it was really annoying and frustrating to deal with. Um, but what you have to realize is that since that meta, when Clash Royale said, hey, we gotta focus on more offensive gameplay. Since that meta, so many different cards have been added into the game. We got the Battle Ram, we got the Miner, the Graveyard, we've got um, so, just so many different win conditions and so many different other cards like the Electro Wizard, the Executioner, all of these cards that do a great job at uh, going on the offense that uh, I, I don't think that buffing defense is going to be totally annoying and frustrating. I don't think it's going to lead to a bunch of draws. The The number of options that we have now are vastly greater than the number of options that we had in the past when Supercell was focusing on eliminating defensive gameplay. Um, so I don't think that you have to be worried about it. I think that the Expo and the the Mortar, which this is going to lead me to my next point, which is reestablishing the archetype equilibrium. And that means making beatdown and 
siege options. And I think that buffing those, the expo and the mortar, I don't think that's going to be annoying and frustrating for the meta. I think that it is going to... Honestly, I think there are enough options in there that you're going to be able to deal with it. I, I, I just want, I just think that it's going to make it a lot more fun to be able to have all these different options in the meta and then all of a sudden make a game that's primarily based off of skill rather than just knowing the, the meta and being able to counter it. Not, um, I, I think that's going to be a lot of fun, So, or I, at least I hope that that's something that they do. Now, when it comes to reestablishing this archetype equilibrium, I think that focusing on reworking offense, defense, um, is going to really help getting beat down into the the, the, the the gameplay. Beat down was doing really well until the super offensive gameplay, and then beat down just couldn't keep up. But and then but siege, I think the siege needs some type of a, a, a buff. Also, I would love to see a new siege uh, win condition. I would love to see a new beat down win condition. We've seen so many different win conditions added into the game recently, like the battle ram, the bandit, if you can call them a, a, a win condition. Um, all these cards, really great control win conditions, and I would like to see Beatdown and Siege added into the game. Um, now, one thing that I, I did want to just uh, mention is in the past, when all of this originally happened, there were basically three different ty deck types. Hog Trifecta, Expo and Mortar Siege, and then Pekka Double Prince. And I just don't think that's going to be... There's so, Like I said, there's so many options now. So I don't think that's really going to have an issue. Then we also have Power Creep cards. So like the Electro Wizard is stronger than the... If, if you have the Electro Wizard in your deck, you don't really need the Musketeer. You don't need the Ice Wizard. You don't need the Flying Machine. You don't need the Dark Goblin. You don't need a lot of different cards just because you have the Electro Wizard in there. I think one of the best things that could happen to the game is if the Electro Wizard got some type of a nerf. He's not a difficult card to deal with. Um, you can deal with him, but I think he just has influenced the meta way too much for too long. And the only time when he really took a step back was when the Night Witch came out, and she was clearly overpowered. So, um, Also the Executioner, Inferno Dragon, some other cards that might be power creeping some other cards. I'd like to see some, some more variation in the options that you have. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it. I know it's been... Uh, a very long time just me talking about the, the, the video. Hopefully you enjoyed my um, my poison drafts and gameplay matches that we got going on there. But let me know what changes you agree with. Let me know what changes you disagree with. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you think that needs to be fixed when it comes to the Clash Royale meta. Um, I don't think that I'm going to talk about individual changes for every individual card that I mentioned because I just think I would take too long and I don't think Supercell should do it all at once. I think that they should really just focus on just doing a little bit at a time. But thank you so much for watching. For now, this is Karo's time ticking by, and we will see you in the arena.